In 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted violently, raining death down on the tens of thousands of inhabitants living in its shadow. The hot ash from the eruption burned and choked the inhabitants of Pompeii and Herculaneum and ultimately entombed them for centuries. Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius capture the imagination of many, and the mountain still looms dangerous above the dense populations that surround the deadly volcano. The first sign that Mount Vesuvius was stirring came in 62 AD with a strong but localized earthquake. This was probably due to the magma first beginning to move towards the surface. The next sign came just days before the eruption, when earthquakes were felt in the region. Scientists believe this was due to the movement of the magma up the feeder tube. On the day the eruption started, Pliny the Younger, his mother, and his uncle Pliny the Elder were stationed at Misenum. Pliny's mother pointed out a cloud forming on the horizon that stretched 32 kilometers, or 20 miles, into the air. It stretched upwards to incredible heights and then spread out wide to outwards at the top. His uncle decided that this was worthy of scientific observation and decided to set out for a closer look. He offered to take Pliny the Younger with him, but he declined, opting to continue his studies instead. Just as he was leaving the house, he received word from his friend Rectina that her villa was in danger and the only way to escape was by sea. She asked for rescue. Pliny the Elder changed his plans to a rescue mission to save Rectina and the others that might need his help. As he approached, pumice stones began falling from the sky. This was the Plinian phase of the eruption, named after our dear friend Pliny the Younger, since he was the first to provide an eyewitness description of this type of eruption. Plinian eruptions are explosive eruptions characterized by huge eruption columns extending miles into the air. They are capable of sending stone and ash over huge areas of land and even affect global climate. Scientists have compared Pliny's accounts to the geological record to piece together the timeline of events of that fateful eruption. The wind pushed the falling pumice southeast of the volcano. Pumice started falling about 30 minutes after the eruption column burst forth and rained down on Pompeii at an estimated 15 centimeters or just under 6 inches per hour. And pumice was pushed by the wind as far away as 72 kilometers or nearly 45 miles southeast of the mountain. As Pliny the Elder reached the intended the spot to come ashore, pumice-filled rough waters made putting in too unsafe. While this exact location is unknown, scientists believe this was close to Atlantis. Pliny the Elder wondered whether to turn back, but then exclaimed, fortune favors the bold, and they pressed onwards towards Stabiae in the hopes of finding better conditions to land there. Meanwhile, back in Misenum, Pliny the Younger continued to study. While the eruption column was visible from his location, the prevailing wind pushed the pumice away from Misenum and towards Pompeii, Aplantis, and Stabiae. This phase of the eruption gave many in Pompeii the time to escape, and the choice to leave now would save them their lives. When Pliny the Elder reached Stabiae in the late afternoon or evening, pumice was steadily falling. The Stabians were fearful and wanted to leave, but rough conditions of the sea prevented them from leaving by boat, and they weren't so afraid that they were ready to flee over land. Night fell. Pliny the Elder got some sleep, but was woken during the night. Pumice had piled up so much outside of his door that they had to leave or risk being trapped inside. The earthquakes were getting more violent, and fearful that the buildings would fall on them, Pliny and the Stabians left the cover of the buildings behind. Pliny the Elder and his men strapped pillows to their heads to protect themselves from the falling pumice and headed outside. They had to light their way with torches because even when the sun rose, there was no light. The same earthquakes woke both Pliny the Younger and his mother all the way over in Misenum. Pumice continued falling into the early morning, but then everything changed. Strong earthquakes, stronger than before, threatened to topple buildings. Pliny the Younger and his mother fled outside where they, and all the people of Misenum, ran over the shifting ground until they were past the buildings. They saw the sea pulling back from the shore, stranding marine life. Signs we now know come before tsunamis. Then they saw what they described as fires and the smell of sulfur, sights so terrifying that it caused the Mycenaeans to run for their lives. Ashes began to fall. They looked up towards the mountain and saw a dark cloud coming towards them. Soon it overwhelmed them and it was darker than night, pitch black. 
Pliny's mother begged him to flee and leave her behind so that she wouldn't slow him down, but he grabbed her hand and pulled her with him. In Stabiae, people also fled. The seas were still inhospitable, so they ran over land. Pliny the Elder couldn't go any further and fell to the ground. Pliny the Younger later blamed it on the ash and fumes, although an exact cause is unknown. This was the Pelaean phase of the eruption, characterized by pyroclastic flows. These are essentially huge, blistering hot avalanches of ash, pumice, and volcanic gases. They usually flow along the flanks of the volcano, settling in lowlands. Studying the layers of deposits, scientists see that seconds before the pyroclastic flows at Mount Vesuvius, ground surges occurred, hot clouds of volcanic gas and ash that move at speeds frequently faster than 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour, close to the ground. The ground surge blasted through, causing major damage to structures, immediately followed by the enormous pyroclastic flow that asphyxiated any who remained near the mountain and preserved their bodies for centuries. Herculaneum had only gotten a dusting of pumice compared to Pompeii and Atlantis, but was decimated by pyroclastic flows and buried under 20 meters of hot ash and pumice. Any wood in the city was turned to carbon, and studies indicate that it reached 400 degrees Celsius or 752 degrees Fahrenheit. Pliny the Younger and his mother had to keep brushing ash from their bodies to keep it from piling up too high. Eventually, the ash cleared and they saw red daylight emerge. They were still hesitant to get out of there, waiting to hear word of Pliny the Elder. That's when one of his comrades arrived and gave word. When the ash cleared, they had found Pliny the Elder, dead and seemingly uninjured, where he had fallen. The ruins lay, buried beneath volcanic ash, for centuries. In fact, they were first unearthed by mistake during construction in the area and confirmed as Pompeii in 1693. The excavations began in the 1700s, and the first efforts were via shafts and mines. Those interested in antiquities expressed their desire to see them exposed where they could be studied. Eventually, in 1763, they started excavating buildings and leaving them that way. Early on, frescoes started disappearing from the walls and structures were damaged by the elements. Excavators gave up on preservation efforts and the only records we have of the frescoes they found were the meticulously illustrated notes of those who first unearthed them. In the 1820s, tourist activity began to make preservation efforts more profitable and better preservation practices were put into place. They're still excavating the ruins to this day. The volcano is still a threat. It's one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. The area around it is the most densely populated volcanic region in the world. For example, Naples is only miles away and has a population of over 30 million. In fact, Vesuvius erupted as recently as 1944, killing 26. The eruption in 79 AD was a 5 or 6 on the VEI scale, that's the Volcanic Explosivity Index. It's a scale we use to measure the explosivity of an eruption. It works a lot like the Richter scale. Each increased number is 10 times more powerful than the previous level. For example, a VEI of 0 is typical of shield volcanoes and Hawaiian eruptions. A VEI of 5 is a Plinian eruption, like Mount St. Helens in 1980 or Vesuvius in 79 AD. A VEI of 7 is for megacolossal eruptions, like the eruption of Mount Matsuma that created Crater Lake. A VEI of 8 is a supervolcano, like Yellowstone. Estimates say that another large eruption, a 4 or 5, on the VEI could kill over 10,000 people. The Vesuvius Observatory monitors the mountain 24-7 for signs of activity that would precede another eruption, and there is an evacuation plan in place. The government of Italy is working to reduce the population living near the volcano by destroying illegally constructed buildings and establishing a national park around the mountain. We have videos over other historical volcanic eruptions, like Mount St. Helens, Critter Lake, and Yellowstone. Feel free to check them out, and if you want more videos about historic volcanic eruptions, give this video a like.